Rasmus is a playful bachelor with scarcely a thing to worry about, and a character overflowing with excitement. One week, he has his friends and co-workers over for a party, and for four hours, they immerse themselves in what could be called the most male party ever. They drink uncontrollably, joke without a moral filter, and do things they would never do if women were present. Hilariously enough, they are all immersed in euphoric humping on Rasmus's couch when their female friends enter the apartment. One of the group is Marie, a woman who catches Rasmus's attention quickly. Rasmus, who hasn't been engaged in a long-term relationship, is proud of his freedom. They glance at each other across rooms until, by happenstance, they end up alone in Rasmus's kitchen. Here, they meet each other for the first time and have quite an ordinary conversation. Even this ordinary conversation is enough for the couple to end up kissing one another after everybody's gone. All Rasmus desires now is for Marie to stay, but as she says, she must leave. Finally, the variety of Rasmus's attempts end up unsuccessful, and she walks out of the door. Rasmus goes into the bathroom then and discovers a note that Marie left. In the next scene, after playing a game with his friends, he shares his latest success in the sexual realm with the trolls. The latter is extremely impressed with Rasmus after hearing that he's been dating Marie for a few weeks now. Rasmus himself says that he's not that serious about this girl, and is waiting for time to show where things go, but Trolls has a different perspective. Without his consent, he shares Rasmus's recent relationship endeavors with the rest of the friend group and openly accuses him of being in love. That night, after answering the door, he sees the woman standing in front of him graciously, and seductively, loosely wearing a robe over black underwear. Needless to say, it is not long after that they are lying on the floor. That night, when we see her face as she listens to Rasmus playing his guitar, Marie is clearly impressed with him. She looks at him as if he were a love she's craved for a very long time. The next morning she prepares breakfast for him, and after Rasmus informs her that he's soon going over to his parents' house for dinner, she asks him if she could come too. To Rasmus, it is too early for such things. His immediate reaction is to turn her down, saying that they shouldn't rush things. Marie tries her best to hide her distress. She's hurt and humiliated to be turned down like this, but she maintains a half-generous smile. Until now, the morning has been extremely positive and loving. But now Marie suddenly tells Rasmus that she's going. Without saying much, she heads outside slowly, waiting for Rasmus to come out of the bathroom and change his mind. Needless to say, the latter comes after her. A tendency to be manipulative is first shown in this scene. Shortly after, they are in a supermarket, where she chooses what to buy for dinner. This is an important occasion, so she won't have him bring childish stuff. Rasmus doesn't fight back. He notices nothing but good intentions in Marie's behavior. That afternoon, the latter makes a good impression on his parents. She tells stories of her university years and how she held private art exhibitions in her garage. The parents love how sophisticated, attractive, and caring she seems, and Rasmus seems to see her in a completely different light here. When the two go to the kitchen, he decides to be the first one to take a step and tells her that he really likes her. Marie gazes at him with loving eyes, asks him to approach, and expresses to him that she feels the same. They embrace each other then, and as Rasmus is sure that this step in the relationship is his own idea, Marie looks over at us with a sly, grisly stare. Rasmus is already deeply embedded in her claws. He is completely subdued by her will. Soon after, she moves in with him, and Rasmus's apartment is filled with boxes full of her stuff. To show appreciation and positive reinforcement, she gives him a present for being so sweet. The sweetness of Rasmus grows geometrically then. He says that before she appeared in his life, all he wanted was to travel around the world, free from responsibilities and full of striving for adventure. But now these kinds of thoughts do not come near him anymore. He is totally committed. The next day, upon coming back to his apartment, he sees that everything has changed. The place is completely redecorated, and the process has just started. Marie greets him warmly and continues making choices without consulting with Rasmus first. She still asks him about the enormous CD collection, saying they will probably be better off in the basement. Books would go much better in their place. Rasmus doesn't like any of this. He feels uncomfortable that Marie would so freely take control of his apartment. To maintain control, he answers that he listens to those CDs, and even though Marie doesn't appreciate his resistance, she decides to let him have it for now. In the next scene, however, when Rasmus decides to buy lasagna, she argues that they should get greens instead. She thinks it's kind of disgusting. Rasmus doesn't yield at first, and Marie lets him have it for a price. Her mood changes instantly, and she moves away coldly, muttering that she'll get rice cookies to eat for dinner. Needless to say, they don't get any meat that day. That night, Rasmus has to work, but since seduction is a powerful weapon in Marie's hands, he is quick to drop his task. The next day, after he listens to his friends mumbling about their recent sexual adventures, he remains drawn into himself. He seems to have lost a fair bit of attunement to his boys. That afternoon, just before going to have burgers with them, Marie calls him asking him if he'll get home soon to have dinner. As Rasmus responds, they've already discussed that he was going to spend the evening with his friends, and just like before, after a series of manipulative expressions, she lets him have what he wants. She tells him to go, but again at the price of compromise, hurting her and losing the things she offers him. 
He eats dinner with her in the next scene, pretending he prefers it over a burger. Marie then suggests her latest idea to him. It is a perfectly organized control mechanism that will allow her to keep track of his activities. It is a calendar on which certain plans will be put on in different colors of markers, depending on how important they are. As Marie says, it will be easier this way to prioritize and avoid misunderstandings. Plans like having a burger with friends will be marked with the lightest color, that will easily be overwritten with more important plans, such as a wedding. Hint hint. While having a walk with his long-term partner on a sunny Saturday afternoon, Trolls encounters a very odd picture. Rasmus, the man who has been crazy for his CD collection, is selling it on a flea market. He would have never done such a thing on his own, so there must be no question in Trolls' mind that his best friend is undergoing an enormous change in life. Rasmus takes a huge step in the next scene. He finally finds it in himself to fight back. Marie brings in a huge piece of abstract art and hangs it in a place that before was occupied with a movie poster saying, Dude. When Rasmus gets home and sees it, he expresses just how much he despises it. He wants it down, and since this is a home where they both live, the decision should be made together. Marie is taken aback by this sudden ambush. She takes it down and says that she'll take it over to her friend's apartment. Throughout the rest of the day, she doesn't even look at him. It is only when Rasmus uses a red marker to check the appointment with his friends on the calendar that she speaks up. To her eyes, these kinds of activities should be put on with a yellow marker that signifies less importance. But Rasmus emphasizes that playing with his friends is very important to him. Marie doesn't argue in this instance either. She chooses a different, subtler strategy to follow. Being cold to him for the duration of the entire day, at night, she warmly invites him to have a conversation about what happened today. In this conversation, she is successful in making Rasmus express how pressured he feels. He says that his energy is progressively evaporating from this apartment, and it feels as if he doesn't exist here anymore. Marie acts clueless and blames it on him, explaining that if he wants more of himself in this place, he should fight for it. Cleverly, she brings examples of her past boyfriends, saying that they were successful in fighting for their rights, they were secure, and this is the trait she is attracted to the most in men. She won't have a boyfriend who's insecure. Rasmus is convinced he shouldn't be a pushover. As time flies, we see light slowly draining from his eyes. He's getting hollowed out, and the abstract painting appears on the wall of his apartment again. One evening, she does something that takes even Rasmus aback. With eyes lacking genuineness, she suggests that he spend a night with his friends, get drunk, and have a lot of fun. She adds that it will be good for him to relax. Rasmus takes the full freedom that is offered to him gladly, but just before he says goodbye to her in the next scene to go to a bar, he learns that Marys is having her own party at home too. It seems to have already been put on the calendar, Rasmus just didn't notice it. That night, Rasmus catches trolls in private and shares his thoughts with him. He feels like a completely different person in his relationship. His needs aren't being accepted or taken into consideration. In short, he feels unhappy and wants to know if it's normal or not. Trolls is in no mood to discuss such sensitive matters right now, so he quickly cuts to the chase, emphasizing that Rasmus has three ways to go about it. He can first stay in the relationship and leave everything as it is. Second, try to change it to make it more acceptable to him. And third, just let it go and break up with her. In any case, he should clearly point out what it is that bugs him. Rasmus is in no mood to stay and play pool with the boys afterwards. He quietly sneaks out of the bar and goes back to his apartment, where the party is still raging. It continues long after he arrives, and when the house is empty again, Rasmus begins laying his complaints over for a discussion. Marie didn't introduce him to her friends, and next time, he would like to be introduced. Additionally, Marie makes plans with her friends as Rasmus makes his point, which also grabs his attention. He is told calmly and confidently that he's clearly overreacting. What they need in a relationship, if you ask Marie, is a date night. That is all. Before going to sleep, Rasmus attempts to seduce her, but as it seems, his latest show of resistance forces Marie to alter the dynamics of their sexual life. Sex is power, and she is willing to use it accordingly. And so, soon, a date night is written down on their calendar with a black marker, the one that signifies utmost importance. It all starts in a hotel room. Clearly, Rasmus has put together a wonderful, thoughtful series of activities and gestures, the first of which is a glass of champagne and a card overflowing with romantic discourse. For now, they don't have much more to do here. Their second stop is a museum of fine arts. As we both observe some statues, we see Rasmus trying his best to pretend he likes this slow, boring process of looking at cold stones. Even his new haircut seems out of place, and Marie also notices how he forces himself to be something he isn't. She makes a comment about that, but decides not to go out of her way to start a heated conversation about it, yet. Still, however, her comment bugs Rasmus a lot. Both fail to put it out of their heads until Marie takes the first step and immerses herself in an enormous monologue, starting with rhetorical questions regarding his careful, stealthy, and scaredy behavior. She empathizes with how Rasmus walks on eggshells around her, trying his best not to do something that would upset her. This trait of his drives her crazy. Rasmus shrugs his shoulders and denies her observation completely, but it's clear that, at least to an unconscious level, he knows perfectly what she is talking about. 
To add to his frustration, Marie follows her latest monologue by underlining what a funny and directive man he once was. Overall, her ambush is so powerful, and she corners Rasmus so well, that all the latter can do to maintain a sense of his masculinity is to explode in anger and start yelling at her as loudly as he can. Naturally, this lapse in judgment doesn't work in his favor. It only gives Marie another piece of evidence for how weak of a man he is, and she makes the best of this situation. Finally, Rasmus just gets away from her. Going through several corridors, he finds a chair and tries to reflect on what happened. After giving way to his aggression, he feels dissatisfied and lost. Deciding to go back to her, he stands up and walks the halls, but he only manages to find Marie outside. She is talking with a man Rasmus doesn't know. They seem to know each other well, and as Rasmus approaches them, Marie ignores him completely. She continues to ignore him even when he decides to walk up to them and introduce himself to this man. The latter seems to have lived with Marie in London. They seem to know each other very well. His name is Jonathan, and he says that one of their friends is having an exhibition tonight. And even though Rasmus has clearly emphasized that he made plans for tonight, Marie responds that they would love to come. When she says goodbye to him with a bright expression, she turns to Rasmus, and all the artificial joy is flushed away from her face as she quickens her pace and passes him by. They don't speak to each other until later that evening, when they start preparing to go to the exhibition. As if they weren't mad at one another, Marie expresses her hope to resume their date some other time. She also emphasizes how important it is to her that she reconnects with the people she met in London. It means a lot to her, and Rasmus should be understanding. Her plans are ambiguous for now, but during the exhibition, they unfold in an unquestionable way. She praises the work of the artist ingenuously, and expresses just how much she looks forward to meeting him in person, while Jonathan tries to get to know Rasmus better. He gives him various questions about art, the field Rasmus has no idea about, and even though Marie acts embarrassed and tries to save her boyfriend some trouble, Rasmus manages to make a great impression. His key to doing so is honesty. Finally, Jonathan prefers his genuineness over Marie's hollow intellectual evaluations, and turns completely to Rasmus when another man comes up to him. He seems to also be from London, and Marie tries to embrace him firmly, as if he were a close friend of hers. The man, however, holds a distance and shows no signs that she knows her at all. Finally, we are assured that Marie doesn't really care for these people, she has no idea who most of them are. Additionally, she is jealous of Rasmus. The fact that he's openly and warmly accepted by Jonathan stirs her up completely. Clearly, her initial plan was to make her boyfriend jealous and embarrassed within a society he scarcely has anything in common with. Unfortunately for her, however, it all turned out to be the opposite. Later that night, when Rasmus is on a peak of having fun, so much so that he's already inclined to start a business with Jonathan in some other country, Marie walks up to him and asks him to leave. Rasmus is reluctant, of course, it's been a long time since he had fun like this. Before Marie can successfully bend him to her will, Jonathan walks up to them and steals her victim away. She is frustrated by this temporary defeat, but she has no intention to accept losing. This is why she storms out of the building immediately and doesn't stop to listen, even when Rasmus runs after her. Rasmus is so desperate to understand what is going on that he goes over to Trolls' apartment. Trying to find a trait of his that bugs Marie so much, he begins to lose track. He is lost while trying to determine if something is truly wrong with him. Should he really blame himself for something he doesn't understand? These are the questions Trolls has to answer. All Rasmus receives from his friends, however, is advice to sleep it off, and one genuine hug to help him feel some hope. None of this is enough for Rasmus to get better, of course. Trolls just tried to get rid of him. He returns to the hotel room then and prepares for a dramatic, decisive conversation with Marie. He begins by asking what it is in his past that upsets her so much. He truly wants to know, since after being asked to be honest, he did exactly that during the exhibition. He acted genuinely, out of pure honesty, and deserved a warm welcome from some of the people there. In response to this question, Marie immerses herself in an incredibly lengthy monologue that puts Rasmus in a state of awe. With an open mouth, he listens to his girlfriend as she goes on and on about how he should immediately drop being himself, since she despises everything that there is to his character. Her bitterness and hatred seem so unforced, and her sly, evil smile and her rhetorical questions are so subtly provoking, that Rasmus decides not to respond to any of them at all. Once she's done, he turns away, leaves the hotel room, and gets back to his apartment. There, he puts everything back where it was originally. For hours, he devotes himself to redecorating the place until all trace of Marie is gone. The next day, he plays football with his friends and endeavors to spend the entire night with them, drinking and making the most of the time. Long before midnight, however, the boys, who are starting to act more responsibly, stand up and say goodbye. Even Trolls follows their lead soon, and Rasmus is left alone. He goes back home then, and wanting to get away as far as possible, he schedules a flight. This is when Marie knocks on his door. She comes in slowly and, speaking in a warm tone of voice, explains that the point of her visit is to retrieve the abstract painting he once bought. Rasmus shows no trace of affection. As she stands in the living room, perfectly aware of the fact that she isn't welcome in this apartment anymore, Rasmus gives her the painting. 
Wanting to stay, Marie notices his computer and sees that he's booking a flight. Rasmus tells her then that he's flying to Argentina and planning to stay there for a year. Marie acts all excited and happy for him, and since she sees no natural continuation of this conversation, she says that she'll be leaving now. Rasmus hopes that this will all end now, but Marie stays inside, thinking of ways to get him back. After a few seconds of heavy silence, she expresses that she misses him. She endeavors to stir him up emotionally, saying that their separation feels unnatural. All her senses are telling her that it isn't over, it shouldn't be over. Despite her guilty look, Rasmus remains cold and indifferent, so Marie is led to change gears. She has come here to win Rasmus back, and she won't leave until she's successful in that endeavor. She admits to her unfair, horrible way with words, and says that she will work on her temper to get back the most important and precious connection they once had. Her eyes fill with tears, and her expressions provoke empathy in Rasmus. Seeing the sorrowful look in his eyes, Marie approaches him and, in the peak of dramatization, kisses him. Rasmus takes her back, and is teared up, Marie gets to her knees and reaches to open his trousers in passion. She looks over at us with that same sly smile once more, knowing that her grip over Rasmus has triumphantly been re-established. Time flies then, and we see Rasmus surprising Marie with a baby shower. As Marie's friends scream from excitement in the living room and praise Marie's growing belly, Rasmus feels a sudden rush of despair coming from within. Going outside, away from the growing noise, he sits on the stairs and, in the most terrible moment, realizes that he is stuck. A wheeze of desperation and bitterness, disappointment, and anger explodes from his mouth, until he returns inside and is met with his wife's ingenuine smile once more. He smiles back in the same way, and prepares himself to engage in a self-destructive relationship cycle again. And so, they smile, and neither of them seem to notice the shackles on their hands. 